Welcome to Ask the Security Guy. I'm Holly Magnuson, and I'm here in my office with Sean Corman. Good morning, Sean. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Uh, we're actually this time pre-recording our episode because someone has another commitment, and we won't name names. But anyway, so what's new, Sean? Well, you know, here we are at the end of the year. Another year gone. Which means we need to look back and see how Sean did on his January predict predictions for 2017. Well, well. I think I, I, I'm like I'm liking to think I did all right. So let's find out. Uh, prediction number one. I'm you know, going old school here with the paper. Ransomware. So <laughs> where do we begin? Actually, ransomware and cyber terrorism got tied up together this year. Okay. Um, there was a major ransomware attack that took out hospitals all, all over oh. Europe and uh, and uh, hit a lot of the, a lot of different areas of the world and. Really, what that is being categorized as a is a combination. It was a ransomware attack. Mm -hmm. I want to cry. Is that the way? Uh huh. You're... And then, but it also because of the the what it attacked, they're calling it a bit of cyber terrorism. Okay, as well. I didn't realize that. Well, some authors are. So it's pretty interesting to see how that's being categorized and why. Um, but it kind of covers both categories. Um, and if you dig into the story a little bit more, they'll tell you that it was some of the NSA stolen tools that were used <laughs> part of the attack. Um, opinions vary. Okay. So you, you hit that one, sadly, right on. <laughs> uh, the second prediction was on the Internet of Things. I'll tell you, the, the Internet of Things just continues to be an ongoing nightmare. Um, what we're finding there is that these small devices just aren't, nobody's baking security into them. Yep. That wouldn't be that much additional effort. But then again, if you're making something that cheap, it Who is cares? that, that yeah. much additional effort. So, you know, if you use these devices, it's good to make sure you have the right controls around them. Yeah. And let's give a few examples of um, devices that are at high risk. So think about your fridge. If you have mm -hmm. a smart fridge, for example, um, a lot of them will connect to cloud accounts. So they'll connect to your home wireless. Mm -hmm. Some of them will want you to make changes to your home wireless to allow inbound internet access to it. I don't recommend that because the, so the security bad. controls around these types of devices are really, really bad. Um, but some of them do outbound connections to like a cloud account. Mm -hmm. And those are really, they're as good as the security of the cloud account. Right. Which um, boils down to strong passwords. Exactly. Exactly. And the practice there of, you know, one password per thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, you know, again, I, it's, it's funny because I talk to people and I say, well, do you have a unique password for everything? And they look at me and say, no, I can't remember that many passwords. Last pass. Exactly. Family account, six bucks a month. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I just started making use of that myself. And secure sharing passwords with other mm -hmm. family members. And it's, it just makes things easy. Yeah. So, lastpass.com. You ready for the next one? I should bring it. Targeted scams. Targeted scams are actually being lumped in uh, with a with social engineering attacks. Yep. You know, they're phishing or whaling or spear phishing yep. or you know any of the other fun acronyms around phishing that go along with that. Um, it's kind of been level. We haven't seen a dramatic increase. Um, haven't seen a decrease in it no. either. No, though we did see, actually very up close and personal yeah. here. Yeah, we definitely had some examples of it being attempted here at yeah. APU. And so, uh, so that was pretty interesting. And thankfully we had a very alert employee who yeah. immediately recognized it for mm -hmm. what it was and alerted us. Yeah. So. And that, actually that raises a good point. We'll cover it towards the end. Okay, well, make sure I remember that. All right, <laughs> I love number four. Adobe and Apple will outpace Microsoft in terms of the number of platform vulnerabilities discovered. Okay. <laughs> Where do we begin? Well, I don't think it quite came true. Okay. Microsoft still wins. Uh, Microsoft still wins, but Apple and Adobe are certainly stepping up their game in a bad way. <laughs> in a very bad way. Um, there have been some really, really interesting new attacks on Mac this year. Yes. In, in particular. And Apple is starting to be a victim of their own success. Yeah. Um, one of the things we've said in security for a long time is the reason that Apple is more secure or is perceived as being more secure 
is not because that it actually is, but because it has such a small segment of the market share yep. that it just wasn't enough of a target. Well, as they get a larger portion of the market share, it becomes the game profitable. is changing. Yeah, the game is changing. So, so yeah. So yes, number five: cyber propaganda and fake news. Yeah, that one seemed to be pretty closely married to the election cycle. Yeah. And, uh, we'll, we'll we're not going to get political, yeah, please. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> not going to get into no, politics. No, no. It just seemed to be pretty attached to the election cycle. All right. Um, increase in regulatory, regulatory compliance for data security. Oh, boy. Yeah, that, that's, oh, man. That's been a fun one this year. Um, yeah. We've got a number of new things or revised things coming down from state and federal um, even the credit card bureaus uh, with PCI DSS are, you know, they're updating their controls. Which is a good thing. It is, you know, it's funny too because um, in a recent presentation I did for senior leadership, I highlighted this regulatory bit as an actual risk to the institution. Mm. And the reason for that is because we've got all these different organizations trying to do, trying to make and enforce good security practices. Areas where, one, that they overlap or conflict could be problematic, and two, the amount of effort it takes any institution to address these things is significant. Yeah. Um, whether or not they're actually in compliance is kind of irrelevant. Is, is the, These types of regulations require that you be able to demonstrate it and prove it, which is also a good thing. Right. But it also brings auditors, <laughs> and auditors take time. And can be... Yeah, and, auditors, we love you. Uh, so while auditors in of themselves is not a bad thing, it's actually nope. a very good it's good thing. Um, it is very time consuming. And in that it comes a risk that you're diverting attention from something else. Right. So it's it's not that I'm saying these are bad at all, but I'm saying they need you need to have a balanced approach to how you address you know your compliance matters and your actual security practices. Mm -hmm. And then dovetail them in a way that one supports the other. Right. You know, when you're employing good security practices, do it in a way that's documented and actionable. Right. Which we've done okay with, I think. We have. All right. Uh, number seven, threat actors, new and improved ways to launch attacks. You know, uh, I think it, it was actually attributed to the NSA. Attacks only get better. Oh, yeah. Uh, Lance Spitzner is credited with having said it actually as a quote from the NSA. Um, but, uh, I mean, whoever crafted that phrase is accurate. Yeah. Because in security, I mean, the bad guys find a new vulnerability, we patch it, we fix it, we defend. Mm -hmm. So it's this constant game of whack-a-mole, you know, uh, where we're always trying, we're, we're always, they find something, we fix it. They find something, we fix it. Um, so, and that leads us to the conversation of how do we be proactive about right. your security. And here at APU, we've done a number of things to put mm -hmm. us on that, that front, that forward-facing side. Um, but you as users also have a responsibility in that, making sure that you're doing good things with your credit, like, you know, employing a credit freeze, using single mm -hmm. passwords for your accounts, making sure your personal account is locked down as securely as possible. Yep. Um, you know, password security and everything cloud is critical yes. because cloud security really is the, the the layers of security that protect that really come down to your account security. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you protect yourself? Yep, I tell people all the time, Google your Google account is as secure as you are with your passwords. Pretty much. Pretty much. And the eighth one you've already kind of covered with the cyber terrorism. Mm, so, yeah. yeah, it was dovetailed with our ransomware. Yeah, so. yeah. And it, it's really interesting about how, how that's been categorized this year. Um, the, you know, the other thing that's, that's been coming, we haven't seen a tremendous amount of new stuff this year, but we've seen increases in certain types of attacks. Yeah. Um, cyber terrorism is one that's looming out there because it's this big, hairy beast that we're all afraid of. Yeah. And we had a taste of it with the hospital attacks. Yes. And it's, it's pretty scary that entire hospitals were forced back to paper and pencil and, you know, patients' medical records and medication records and all of these things were all of a sudden just gone. Yeah. And this is life and death. Yeah. I mean, you take that in a hospital, you're talking about life and death and the information about these patients and what's keeping them alive. 
-hmm. is all electronic. Yeah. Um, so it's a very real threat and this had very real world implications that were life and death. Yeah. It's really life and death. So yeah, yeah, it, it's been a it's been a stellar year. Yes. And in Jane Oh, go ahead. We had some of the most massive breaches we've ever seen. Equifax. Yeah. <laughs> nothing, nothing like having a credit bureau lose everything. Yeah. Um, that's impressive. So, yeah. So, January is unfortunately, unfortunately, right around the corner. <laughs> and you're going to have some predictions for 2018 that's for us? The, that's the plan. That's our tradition. Okay. So. Any final words? I do have some final words um, as we close out the year. You know, it's been... This year, what we've seen among compromised accounts is our lowest yeah. year ever. Yeah. We're I mean, talking about here at APU. And we've gone actually months with zero compromised accounts this Thank year. Thank you, community. <laughs> so that speaks to you in the community for doing your part, for employing good password practices, for keeping a watchdog eye out, for reporting you know, phishing messages up to either the support desk or the ISO account. Um, to our engineering teams who have just done a phenomenal job with all the different layers of security they okay. support and, the, and the, the weather eye they keep on what's going on in the world. I mean, in all of our teams here at APU, and you know, for, for sake of their privacy and security, I'm not going to name names, and, but you guys know who you are. Mm -hmm. um, I want to thank each and every one of you in, in IMT and in the APU community and all of our partners you know, across IAPU. Thank you for all that you do yeah. to make us more secure. Because really, you are where boots hit the ground. Yeah. And it's it's really it's really your efforts that make us more secure. So right. thank you for all you do. Thank you. Yes. Any questions? You can email us at iso@apu.edu. And until next month. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.